What is lorem ipsum? A history. You've probably stumbled upon the lorem ipsum text if you've used some form of design or web content management software. So, where did lorem ipsum come from? Is lorem ipsum a person? A place, perhaps? Here's a quick look at its history. Lorem ipsum is generally filler text. It's often used in place of text or visuals in print, infographics, or web design. Its primary purpose is to make sure that the original text doesn't distract the designer or developer from the overall layout and visual hierarchy. Think of lorem ipsum as letters acting as fillers, so as not to distract a person who's working on the visual layout of a poster, website, or infographics. Where did lorem ipsum come from? The term lorem ipsum is derived from the Latin term dolorum ipsum, which means pain itself. The text has been in use for a very long time, and its history spans for over two millennia. Its origins were discovered by Richard McClintock, a Latin scholar from Hamden Sydney College. According to his research, lorem ipsum dates back to 45 BC from classical Latin literature. The words in the text originated from the book Definibus Bonorum et Malorum, translated as The Ends of Good and Evil. The series of books was a treatise on the theory of ethics and was written by the ancient Roman philosopher and statesman Marcus Tullius Cicero. The placeholder text was taken from the first book's discourse on hedonism. The treatise was very popular during the Renaissance period, and it compelled a great many intellectuals and luminaries of the time to read the books. But how did the great works of Cicero ultimately become a filler text? According to McClintock, it may have just been a happy coincidence. He theorized that a typesetter who was required to make a type specimen book used the text as a way to demonstrate different fonts. With Cicero's work as one of the most published works during that time, the typesetter would most likely have used an excerpt from Cicero's books. The typesetter may have also decided to scramble the words from the book so as not to distract himself while working on the type specimen. Due to this strange coincidence, the garbled words of a legendary rhetorician have survived for over four centuries.